Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another video on our 2004 Combi T5. It's the 2.5 litre 174 engine. I think it's an AXE actually. Anyway, previously we found... Sorry, if you haven't seen the video, look, that's looking for the water leak or where the water's going. Have a look at it, see what you think. Got the same problem. It might help you out. Anyway, we have got a replacement water pump. Auto dock, had to wait a bit, but it's from Germany, so you must expect that. Their prices are very competitive. Um, I've only just started using them, but check them out, they're good. Anyway, we got our SKF water pump. I went for the SKF because it's a good name, and it had a metal impeller, which I like to look at. Now, a couple of people uh, were questioning about, from the last video, what do I mean? Where's the interspace? Where's the water coming from? So I'll quickly explain it. So we've got the water pump here. Normally there's a pulley goes on here, which is actually a gear. So this side is in oil. And this side is the impeller that spins. Like so that's in the water. So we've got a seal here, which keeps the oil this side. And we've got a seal here, that keeps the water that side. And there's obviously seals on the shaft stopping the water and oil going along the shaft now this little hole there can you see inside you might be able to see the shaft turning that's the interspace that's what i was talking about so when you look at the engine this is the outside this is the inside and engines here this is the back if that makes sense so this is the banjo fitting that was fitted to the block now this goes here it's out here but basically any water that gets through that or oil sorry gets through that that or through the shaft it should come out here go out through this fitting and then go out through that tiny tiny little hole along a hose which is about that long and drip out the bottom which i'm sure it worked for a couple of years <laughs> before the engine got mucky before it got blocked up because this one if you see before from my last video was block solid so that's sorry i'm hope i'm not going on too long but that's what i mean by the interspace it's the gap between basically yeah proper job we've also got a little toolkit for water pump removal is that going to stay probably not we need oh yeah it is so um this is what comes from the kit it's just a, a cheapo kit. We'll see how it works out. I, I, it's not even a named one, I don't think. I think I got it from Amazon. If I did, I'll put it on my Amazon store or shop, whatever you call it. Tell me what I'm supposed to call it. Put it in notes. Is it an Amazon store? Uh, I'll put a link anyway. And uh, if you buy a link from there, um, I get a little bit of uh, a little bit of money. I can't remember what it's called now. Anyway, I'll get a little bit of money if you buy something from there. Um, anyway, back to this. This is a little kit, so that is to pull the gear off of that shaft. This is the crank tool, so you can see whereabouts the crank is. So we've got to set that one, that crank point up. I think it's 45 or 90 degrees from top dead center, I think anyway. And this is for actually pulling the pump out. So what would happen is, I don't know what orientation it goes in, but that screws on there. And then as you tighten that up, see what it does? It's, it basically pulls the pump out of the housing. That's what I guess it's done, does. Never done it before. So we'll find out together, won't we? Anyway, the pump is obviously in the engine bay, which is very dark. Let's find my torch. I put it down there strategically. There we go. So, water pump is down in the belly. Hang on, I've got a pointer. Look, I'm all organized. There it is. So it's behind that cover. Can you get there? Hang on. Sorry if I'm rubbing you on things. It's behind that cover there. So we've got a few bolts to take out there. And we've got a few things to remove to make access easier, like the water bottle. I think, oh, I don't know, we might be able to get away without removing the gear linkage, I don't know. We might have to just take some bits off 
as and when. So I'll turn that light off in a minute. Anyway, blimey, five minutes, so I haven't even started anything. So first thing we've got to do is we've got to drain the coolant out. We'll take the, there's a, a sensor in the bottom of the, the radiator, which we'll take out, drain it from there. There is a plug on the back of the engine, right beside this thing. That drains the back of the engine. And I think we might have to take the oil water cooler pipe fitting off, I'm not sure. Whilst that's draining, we can get it on top dead center or 90 degrees from top dead center. Then we can get in there and have a look. So anyway, um, water first, I guess. So let's make a start. Boop. Right, oh, we're going underneath oh, the end of the tray. There's a bug up there. The end of the tray is already removed from last time. We haven't put it back on yet. So we want to drain the radiator, which is here. And that is the plug or the, the the sensor that I want to take out. So we'll have to, I don't think we'll be able to do it like this. There's a little clip we can pull out at the bottom there. And then that whole thing should slide out. And then we'll probably make a right mess. I, I hope you can see. I can sort of see we're in the line of fire here. So that looks like the clip. Oh, that came out easy. So this is where I think I'm going to get wet. There we go. Let's see if I can pull this out. Oh, yeah. Yeah, wet. Oh, we're going everywhere. Oh, we're digging everywhere. Oh, I'm making a mess. And then we could take the old expansion bottle out. So you're hanging down the back of the engine now and you can see that the, there's the open hole is where I moved the banjo fitting from and next to it is the drain. Now I really can't see at the moment, can you tell me what that is? Is that a spline or an allen key? I can't tell. So it looks like an allen key to me. I'm going to try and reach down and undo it with this because I can't seem to get anything else on there. So uh, I'm working by feel here anyway. Oh, can't get the leverage. Let's try an allen key. It's gone! So's my spanner. Nope, got it. Eee, that was tight. I'm gonna have to move the pot underneath in a sec, I reckon. We'll see him here. Oh yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna put something underneath first. Oh, we've got a container underneath. Hopefully you'll catch some of it. Might have come out quite quickly. There's the plug. Oh no. Oh, this is a messy job. Some of it 
it's going in ish. From what I can see. Uh, maybe. <laughs> Look at that carnage. Well, yeah. That's good. That's a lot of it gone. <laughs> and this is all dribbling in different places now. Right. Uh, let's leave that dribbling and get in that crank shaft in the right place. Trying to set it to top dead side down. Oh, excuse me, my lunch. Ooh. I've just taken the arch liner out on the driver's side and to find the plate we got to remove. Now, this is it. And you can see there's an Allen key there, Allen screw there. Or, but there's some at the top and there's <laughs> some behind this, which is a water pipe. So um, I'm going to see if I can undo these, cut the screws and get a bit of flex on it maybe. Well, we've got the tool on and you can see the, the line there. The top dead centre would be, can you see, sorry, would be that where that half joint is, that line. I don't know if you can see it or not. But anyway, that tool is on, but what a pain that plate was to get off. That goes right up inside there. So uh, it's right up by the chassis rail and there's bolts all the way up there. So I had to cut down one of my Allen keys so it would fit between the rail, the chassis rail and uh, the bolts. And also to get in behind it, there's bolts in behind, behind this, so I had to take this off. That one's obviously sheared off in the past. That one was tight as, and uh, yeah, didn't want to come off. But uh, luckily I had this set, these um, bolt removal tools, and you sort of hammer them on and they, they bite in. So, and that was just the right size for that hex head or, um, cap head bolt so yeah so get yourself a set of these because they're they saved me these are us pro tool ones yeah good little kit that anyway let's uh turn that to where it needs to be and then we can move on here we go there's our tool fitted and we're top dead center plus 90 degrees that's what it says in the book so that's what i'm gonna do Okay, well, sorry about the noise, I've got the heater on. It's getting a bit chilly, it gets damp in here. Anyway, it's been a second for you, it's been over a week for me, so I do apologize. Uh, yeah, life stuff. It's great getting old. Anyway, we need to get down in there and in the pump area down hidden under there. So uh, ultimately, I'm gonna try and get you guys in there somewhere so you can see what's going on I'll try my best it is cramped and my hands will be in the way but uh, yeah so I do apologize but we'll see what we can do Okay, we've got the plate off and we've got to try and undo that centre gear bolt there and it's a 24mm nut so let's see if I can get on there and do it. Oh, there we go. Or am I turning the am I turning the engine? Am I? Yes, I'm turning the engine. Oh bother. Hold on, I'm gonna lock this engine up then. Dunno. Bear right with. Alright, let's try this again. Yeah. 
Right, so we're not going to wind that one all the way off. Now we've got to put our tool in there. So here's our tool. Now I'm going to get totally in the way putting that in. It goes into those little holes, I think. Oops, so anyway. But you're not going to be able to see, so I'm. Um, uh, do apologise. I'm not in the right place at all. Right, bear with, I'll get it in place and I'll show you. So as far as I can tell, that is the tool in place. It's really hard to see. So now we've got to get that gear off. I believe that's it. Over that, all oh, things come off. That's it. That's not particularly easy to get out. Let's get a magnet. It's magnetic. Yes, it is. There we go. So this is how I lock the crankshaft. I just put the spanner on the crankshaft locking tool and G-clamp on the subframe and that stopped it turning perfect and then there's two allen keys to get out if I can work out where they are So now we've got to get this tool in here somehow. Um, I think just, I don't know. Do it in the middle of this pump that I cannot see. Uh, and a threaded section on the end. Must be going on. And I've taken this little, the little um, electrical connector, this thing, like out of that hole, and uh, I think that's it. Um, I don't know what's going on there. Right, there's a little screw that comes with the kit going in there, I guess. Really? I should have got a spine out like this before. Didn't walk this out, did I? Right. Bear with. Right, that is the tool lid as far as I can tell. That's, uh, I didn't bother doing that one up tight, but there is a peg at the bottom which you cannot see. And um, that's engaged. So I think, just got to wind this out as far as I know. Oh, no, we've got to go the other way. We've got to go. Been eight mil.
And there it is, out of the hole. Can you see in the hole there if I put the torch there? There we go. That's where it came from. Let's go up to the bench and I'll show you what we've done, or what we've got. Okay, we are at the bench and yeah, this is um, pretty manky. No wonder it, uh, water wasn't getting to the show or to the telltale, shall I say. Look at the difference. <laughs> that's what it's supposed to look like. And, and that's what it looks like. Anyway, you can see how the bracket fits on now. That screw just goes straight onto this threaded part and that's the left hand thread. And you just crank on it. It's only eight mil though. Um, so it was tight to begin with, but it's out. So I think we've just got to have a clean up. And um, yeah, and this is a slightly different impeller. Let's show you that impeller actually. Look, that's uh, that's right. That's just that screw falling out. This looks a bit tired, doesn't it? I mean, that's a slightly different design, but yeah, that's a caged one, so that should be better. Yeah. Anyway, let's uh, clean up stuff, and then we'll decide how what we're going to show you to put it back in because that. Was a nightmare to film. <laughs> yeah, the camera is this big and it's hard to get in there. So anyway, I'll have a clean up. Uh, basically, to put it back in, we've just got to push that in and do up those two screws and then put the gear on. And oh, I didn't show you the gear. Here it is. Here's the gear. So that one, obviously as a taper, just goes on like that and the, the nut does it up on that thread. And if you do like what we're doing here and find it informative or entertaining, please give us a thumbs up. And you can see how the gear puller works. It sort of just goes in, turns a little bit and locks. It's, it's nothing technical. See it back there? It just, and then you pull on it. So we've given everything a nice clean up, so it's all ready to go back in. I am going to lubricate the, the rubber seals with some, um, that's like an O-ring lub lubricant. And here's the old pump and, yeah, I think it's done its time. And also, I'll try and rest you on something. It's pretty, pretty done in, so. Anyway, we've had a clean up in here as well. I don't know if you can see, we gotta go shove it all back in there. So I'll try and set you up again. I am looked at the footage, sorry, funny angle. I am looked at the footage before. I hope you can see what I'm doing and we'll see what we can do with this anyway. Uh, and I am gonna use this. I'm gonna take that, beat, that piece of the kit off uh, and put it on there to help guide the pump in, so. Wish me luck. Let's see how this goes. Well, that took a long time. The pump still turns. I'm going to take this little shaft off now. Yeah, I had to draw that in a long way. It didn't want to go in. So uh, 
Yeah, that was tight. That was very tight. Let's get the wheel on. Your battery is just about to go flat, so uh, I'm going to have to change it. So you've got your new battery, so that's good. Let's uh, try and get this gear back in. This was a bit of a pain in the air, actually, wasn't it? Is there a technique? I don't know. Try bottom first. Ah. Just give it a wiggle and then and that. And I've changed the clamp on the flywheel lock. And now we've got, let's see if we can talk it up. Can we right there? Uh, 62 pound foot. It's really quite tight. Oh, done. And then the plate. <laughs> click, click, click. That's all done. Let's start building up the rest of it. There we go. That took longer than I thought it was going to. Didn't want to go in the bore. Um, excuse me, it's getting cold now. Mm. Yeah, they, it, I had to pull it in with longer bolts and wiggle it, and it did just eventually it just went, but that took a long time to line that out. Anyway, next up, what we're going to do is got to put that plate back on, that one there. <laughs> you can see me janky crank, crank shaft locking tool. It worked. It works, so that's fine. Anyway, I'm not going to bore you with putting all this stuff back together. Basically, just got to put the water bottle back in there, put that back in, put the wheel back on, and then fill up with water. We're all back together. I did give that a clean as well. I tell you, whoever designed that down there should... No, they shouldn't be shot. It's not that bad. But blimey. Getting those screws in, the ones up there, there's one there, there's one about an inch up there, there's one about three inches up there, and in a lot of room. Yeah, oh, I've got to put a screw in that, haven't I? Yeah, that one's, that one's rusted off. But yeah, I've got to put a screw in there. But yeah, that took me ages. God, excuse me, rocking you around. But he, even give me a bloodshot eye, look. Huh. But yeah, I had to put a little piece of grease, like high vacuum grease, on the cover to hold the Allen oh, cap head screw in whilst I put it up, put two screws in the bottom and then managed to turn it with two screwdrivers on the end, on you know, a, a distance. Oh, I was waving you at the ceiling there, sorry. But yeah, and um, put the bottom radiator sensor in and that. Uh, We've been thwarted by a little plastic piece. It's a, I can't pressurise it with nothing on it, it would just piddle out, wouldn't it? So anyway, I'll sort out a piece and there won't be a second view. I haven't put that bit on yet either, that's the the telltale. I'll, uh, I'll put that on once we know everything's okay. But there we go. Anyway, next for you will be me putting some water in it. Well, um, I've bodged the clip back in and yes, it did pop out on me. Let's try it. Contact.
Well, we're getting some temperature in there. But, um, sorry for shaking you. I don't want to go too hot because obviously I've bodged that bottom radiator clamp for the uh, sensor. But we've got some heat in it. You can see. I can't put the cap on. We can't pressurize it. It's just going to blow that sensor out. So, um, yeah, I think it seems good at the moment. Well, we finally have a replacement clip for the uh, thermo doofer what's it at the bottom of the radiator. So I'm gonna take the bodge out, chuck this in, and we'll give it a pressure test. Well, we've been at 15 psi for 45 minutes or so, so I'm calling that a success. We are all up to temperature. Lovely. We stuck some of this winds radiator flush in the old expansion tank. Um, it's all got up to temperature, lovely. Everything seems fine. Uh, the fans ran, so yeah, all good. So uh, we'll give the cooling system a flush. I won't show you that, it's, it's the same as before. And then we'll replenish it with some decent coolant and antifreeze and yeah, I'm pleased, I'm pleased with it. And there is something we need to talk about with this cheap kit. Now, the crankcase, or the crankshaft, should I say, uh, the, the holes in the crankshaft are not the same distance away from the center. One of them is further in than the other. So the distance that they got this apart is correct, but it should be sort of shoved over like that. So it does work, but it's not actually concentric in the end of the crankshaft. So you can see there, the one that go points towards, you see that? There's a line for top dead center. That should be closer to the center of the pin than this one. So I've just marked it up that that one, when it's in the, the, the right place, is the top dead center. I know on the more expensive ones, it is dead right. This isn't perfect, but it works. And it, I think the kit was, I can't remember, 30 something pounds, as opposed to, the expensive kits which are over a hundred pounds that I you know I, I'm happy with that I know but as long as you know that when you set that at the top dead center um, you know you've got to mark up which one is which and I really did question why um, we had to take that plate off the end of the crankshaft and fit that tool um, um, I mean the Haynes says it must not be at top dead center of the engine, it has to be 90 degrees out. Um, now, that tool obviously you can lock the crankshaft with, like I did with a spanner, which allows you to undo and retorque the bolt, or sorry, retorque the nut that holds the gear in place. That That's good, that's fine, but why it says it mustn't be on top dead center, I don't know, unless when you take it off, there may be a potential for it to turn because it's top dead center, because of compression or because of the load on the cams. I do not know. I just followed the instructions and I know that plate was a pain in the backside, but we got it done. We got it done. Right, that's it. I've yapped on enough. We've done something. We've actually done something to fix the T5. I have done, so oh, we could cross that off. Let's cross this off. Ooh, this is exciting. Water pump. Done. Yeah, we've got a few others to do, haven't we? Yep. Good job, job. On to the next issue. Yes. We always knew there was going to be plenty of issues, didn't we? We knew it. It's an old T5. Anyway, like I said a second ago, I've waffled on enough. I've taken enough of your time. 
it is not the easiest of jobs to do. It is it's awkward in down behind. Um, I'm the wrong height to work on this van, I've decided. And this is the wrong size to work on this van. Because a couple of times, I mean, I just stand on a crate to be able to reach behind. I rocked on my belly, kicked the, the, the crate out and nearly chinned myself. Yes. I wish I'd videoed it because that would be a good blooper, wouldn't it? Never mind, I should have the video or the camera running all the time. Uh, right, that's it. Um, thank you very much for watching. Check us out on Instagram, Larks underscore workshop. And don't forget to check my Amazon store, I think it's called. I've got a link in my bio. Um, I don't know how else you get to it, but it's on my Instagram. You can link to it as well. And yeah, it's showing the tools I've I've got and I'm using and some of the stuff I've be, bought for the van from Amazon, which I'm using. So I'm going to start putting more stuff on because... I'm always getting questions about tools and I'm waffling. Right, that's it. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much for watching. Hope to see you next time on another one of these. I have got some work to do on Chloe's car, which was a little unexpected. But yeah, there we go. It's all out of order. This is going to be all confusing. Never mind. Hope to see you next time. Cheers then. And I just spat. Do apologise. <laughs> <laughs> oh, let's try it again. <laughs> G clamp on the subframe and uh, push it against it. Need to learn to talk. And I'm gonna stop talking because I'm talking rubbish. As per usual, don't listen to me. Never listen to me. No one listens to me. Yeah.